Hello and good evening. My name is John. We're here playing Angels with Scaly Wings. It's part of my Steam Cleaning series where I go through every game in my Steam library, eventually then arbitrarily rate and or review them without just a wee bit of playtime. Now, not quite sure what this game is about, but the intro implies that it was uh, a bunch of lizards, dragons, and I think it's a visual novel, so we're going to hit start and go right in. <clears throat> System. Detecting user profile. User profile not found. Please enter your name. Steam cleaning. Steam clean. Choose a color. Green. <clears throat> Does this look right? No. Name. Choose a color. Blue. That's better. Better contrast. Profile confirm. Before we start, please review the following information. Left click. All right. Space fence. All right. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. All right, so that was not... I didn't need to do voices for that. It was just the... The year is 20 xdx Only recently has humanity discovered, humanity discovered a portal that leads into a different world populated by a race of intelligent talking dragons. I was one of the few to travel to this world. But maybe I should start at the beginning. It all began when we discovered a strange device in the middle of nowhere during one of our expeditions. A portal. That's what it looks like. I had heard about similar technology before, though that had been more than an experimental level. From what I know, knew, the other, other portals that had been created in the past were under construction for mass application, and for this one in particular, though, we did not know who had built it, nor when, or what we found in the wilderness where we did. What was more exciting to us was the fact that it was functional. After our first test, we found there was something else on their side who was in possession of a similar portal, and our attempts to communicate through the letters were successful, but in the end, the machine's extraordinary demand for power meant we needed to act quickly, or as we wouldn't be able to keep the portal open much longer. When we made this known on the other side, we received a very unexpected letter. Reply, a letter of invitation. After some deliberation, we decided to accept their hospitality and send a person to the other side. <clears throat> there was an individual who took the job almost immediately. It was me, Steam Clee! Nope. Reza Izquiru. I knew him, or rather, had known him. We attended the same school back then, and even had a few classes together. We never really had were very close friends, but we talked to each other occasionally and hung around with the same crowd sometimes. However, we still went our separate ways in the end. <clears throat> I wasn't sure to think about the whole thing, what to think about the whole thing, but he had known that what he was doing, he certainly was braved. Either that, or just very, very foolish. While I wasn't sure which... His courage was applauded by others. After all, he couldn't possibly have known who or what waits on the other side of the portal. And if he did meet someone there, who knows what kind of intentions they may have. <clears throat> not, that any, not that any speculation on our part would have made any difference. When they finally came, we went through. <clears throat> he went through with the applaud echoing across the area. We have only a closey war, multi-tool, a gun, and a device in wrist known as a, acted as a PDA. Personal display of affection. Then we waited. The crowd that was applauding slowly dispersed and enthusiasm died down, as there was nothing for us to do but wait and speculate. Approximately eight hours later, we received the first message from him. While you assume the portal led to a different country or maybe a different continent, the reality turned out to be much more foreign. The situation described was out so outlandish that we usually took it as a joke. A very bad joke, maybe, but even worse timing and no punchline at all. Assuming clear, clear though, they may have just made one of the most important discoveries since the dawn of mankind. Finding portal had been remarkably, been remarkably itself, but this took a completely different level. What we described... But the place where Mackley its inhabitants, we were surprised it could not be part of Earth at all. We called them dragons because according to Reza, that's what they were, or at least what they resembled the most. Even though we found it hard to believe it had been designed, dragons that sent us all those letters. And while Raza, <coughs> Reza found on their side of the portal was a whole civilization of them, they could talk, write books, had buildings, electricity, in many ways their sociality was actually very similar to our own. So who were they? And where was this place? Could they be aliens? Our speculation led us to conclude otherwise. After all, we knew about the existence of thousands of planets, millions of light years a way that may have been theoretically habitable, yet even then we had never found clues proof of actual alien life forms. Some people brought up a quantum mechanics of parallel universes, but then all that was just conjecture and ultimately fruitless endeavor, since we had neither had the means nor the research to expose possibilities for detail. I think there's just one more thing worth mentioning before I move on. The previous isolation had been mutual. They hadn't known about any of their intelligent life forms beyond their own, and their portal had only recently been discovered and was a technology previously unknown to them, and just as we had myths about dragons, they had myths about us. That's what we knew about them so far. As interesting as learning these things and debating their culture simply was, we didn't really know what we should make of it all. Reza apparently was sure of what he was doing, though, as eventually let us know that he had agreed on a trade. We either given him a few of our PDA devices, PDA devices which contains a vast amount of knowledge, dwarfing even their, that of encyclopedias, and in turn they were supplies with generators. Overall, it didn't seem that overall they didn't seem as technology advanced as we had, but they did surprise us. The means generating energy seemed sustainable. 
<clears throat> not only that, but evidentially also quite efficient. We certainly would be able to put technology like that to good use. And trading mere past knowledge of human race for something more tangible was a good call on his part. That's where I came in. I am a PDA. My prior experience as both biology and sociology made a good fit to deliver our PDA devices for the trade, and while the dragons were all waiting for the prototypes or generators to be manufactured by then, I would actually act as an ambassador on humanity's behalf. What way to make a first impression by displaying mutual goodwill? Everyone benefits and everybody goes home happy. All is well. At least that was the plan. Despite the images that living talking dragons might conjure up some people's minds, I didn't even think to bring a weapon myself, considering they were reportedly friendly and peaceful enough. There was no need for fear, potentially no need for me to fear potentially ill intentions like Reza did when he had stepped through on, into unknown territory. And acting as humanity's ambassador, I had to do my best to uphold the standards and fostering diplomatic relationship. When my time came for me to step through this portal, all my mental preparedness vanished. My anxiousness was fueled by questions lurking in my head, just as the machine started to do its work. Would it hurt? Who would I meet on the other side? What if they were living so friendly and just had Maz Raza write those letters with the potential of appearing friendly only lures into a den of man eating monsters and certain doom? With us ending up as nothing more than a tasty afternoon snack? Maybe I should have brought a weapon after all. Suddenly, I felt a shiver cursing through my whole body as the beyond and beyond when I disintegrated as if every cell, every atom of my body was torn from me and pulled into a different direction. <clears throat> so it did hurt. I saw darkness and light, patterns painting in the stars as I traveled, and images rapidly flashed before me of things unseen and unspoken, but with horrifying to beautiful, it was experienced unlike any other, yet over, yet over in just a split second. And then it was dark. I could only see a patch of light Lighter color contrasting with its darkness around me as my vision started to clear. Its edges got sharper and the patch of light slowly took shape, giving me a distinct outline of reptilian head and an array of horns sprouting from it. It's a dragon! You're a dragon, Harry! It was a dragon. And I could see now a dragon who not only had a pair of round glasses, but also wore a burgundy tie around its neck. That is Remy. In the name of our people, I bid you welcome. If I may introduce myself, I am Remy, your guide and ambassador, representative of our council. Dragon spoke is one thing to hear and read about this, but something else entirely at one stand in front of me, in flesh and blood and tongue. It was good that all my mental preparedness had disappeared when I was teleported, because nothing could have prepared me for this. Sorry, I imagine I might be still filled with the effects of teleportation. Drowsiness or weakness is not unusual. As is fainting, spontaneous empty your bowels, bladder, and stomach, how do you feel? Uh, rendering, rendered speechless, I totally found that I was showing the burden of representing my people to them as well. So much for being professional, but at least he gave me a good excuse for my blunder. I, I think I'm alright. Oh, there's a smile. Well, I'm glad to hear that. Maybe we, should, maybe we should go before it gets too dark. Come with me, please. So I followed the dragon, not straying too far from him, as the sun had already departed for the day and remaining light diminished by the minute. So... I need to see side by side how side by side how big these dragons are compared to the human because I'm a little confused right now. It's getting hard to see where I'm going. Sorry about that, but we had a good reason to schedule a robbery like this. We did not want you to be ambushed by a crowd, so we kept your exact time and date arrival secret. Thanks. I suppose an event like this would make me a celebrity of some sort. It would be the same if one of you came to us. That's quite a statement. Some people here are rather superstitious. They might regard you or any of your kind as divine, I suppose. Really? How so? We do have certain myths that involve humans as such. Oh, I suppose the history lessons will have to wait for another time. Here we are. At this point, it's gotten so dark they can barely make out the building for us. I briefly wondered whether they might have street lights elsewhere or if they just did not require any due to possible enhanced eyesight or night vision. I could barely see the dragon, his light's color still visible with the blackness that engulfed the area. Rear up a manipulated door handle with one of his forepaws. This seems remarkably human designed. Like that chair doesn't have a place for a tail to stick out. My hmm. hinge creaking, the door opened, and with the flick of a switch, the apartment was flooded with light, blinding me after all the time we just spent without it. This is where we live for the time being. It's fully stocked, but in, ca in case you need anything else, I left you a note with a few phone numbers. It's getting rather late, so I'll have to take my leave now, and in case someone will come by and meet you in the morning. Thank you, Remy. Have a good night. Till we meet again. Boop. With a nod, Remy left the apartment, mindful enough to close the door behind himself, surveying the view I considered the events that might have transpired as my gaze met the window. I could see movement outside. As I drew nearer, st nearer st startled, I could hear footsteps in the grass moving away quickly. Assuming it must have been the dragon I just met, I thought nothing of it as I went to bed, slowly succumbed to the sweet allure of, s 
both sleep overdue. overdue. I spent a few moments thinking about my role, my mission, what it meant to be here now. Oh, it's a choice. I felt the responsibility placed on my shoulder. I'm eager. For, I felt the responsibility placed on my shoulders. Now here I was, a stranger in a strange land. As I only began to feel the weight of the burden that lay upon me, the pressure of my tasks and expectations I would have to meet, re representing a species, culture, and civilization. No Oxford comma minus one point. So many would, so many would depend on it. Yet I did not even know where the um, we know where the other. Um, blah. So many depended on it. Yet I did not even know where the only human contact I had currently was. I was alone. How do you use the bathroom? Did they build the human bathroom? <clears throat> Whoa. Chapter one, Inception. I woke from uneasy dreams, looking at an unfamiliar ceiling. Just for a moment, I wonder where I was before the events of last night all came back to me. After a good stretch, I looked around the room, illuminated by sunlight coming from the window. Outside, in the distance, a portal I had emerged from probably stood on the peak of a small hill. Getting ready, I noticed something lying on the table. It was a note that Remy left for me in case I needed anything. Along with his own phone number, work number, and there were some numbers for delivery of food and other necessities, as well as emergency and even janitorial services. He had certainly thought of everything, even though now I had to wonder what a dragon plumber might look like. Ah! I'm using a drive to buy a doorbell ring. When the doorbell rang. When I opened the door, I was met by another dragon. Well, duh. <laughs> Why are you naked? The other dragon had a shirt on. You're clearly naked. I don't know your size, relative. Sebastian. He Hello, you must be Steam Clee. I'm Sebastian, and I'll be your escort, or security, I suppose. Usually I work for the police, though. Nice to meet you. He seemed a lot smaller than Remy, and when he somehow... And when he somehow nervously extended his arm towards me, I noticed he apparently walked on his hind legs, the two forelimbs instead of having distinct arms, instead having distinct arms with hands and fingers. Kiss his hand, no, shake his hand. When I took his hand in my mind, shake his hand, I could feel the individual bumps and scales through his raw skin. Nice to meet you, too, Sebastian. So where are you taking me? Straight to business, eh? We're going to visit the plant where they're making your generators. They have some news for you, so I've heard. Reza will be there, too. Sounds great. Just follow me. While we walked, I wondered, I was under the impression that we were purposely avoiding the busier parts of town, instead of straying towards the edges and small alleys not to garner too much attention. Even then, we got the occasional stare. After just a couple minutes, we arrived at the destination where we met Reza, as well as yet another dragon, a vicious looking beast that didn't stay, clo so stay too close to him. Okay. Wait. That's not the first meeting we met but that is... Okay, so they, they're about as tall as we are. Hey! Reza, no long, long time no see. How true that is. Good to finally see another human face around here. I'm racist. What a coincidence to have you, of all people, show up. Yeah, I guess those degrees aren't so useful after all. By the way, who's your friend? Oh, just my bodyguard. Same as you. Don't bother him. He doesn't talk much. Just like you? Very funny. The two dragons exchanged a few words, as, and as I met the gaze of the larger ch Ten Boris dragon a few paces from a Sebastian turned towards me and spoke up again. Hey, Steve Clean, this is Maverick. Nice to meet you. Yeah, whatever. Just don't expect me to give you any special treatment like everybody else is, and we'll be good. What are you talking about? So you're saying it knows how the stairs and how they treat you like your next Maasai or something? No, no, I just thought... I can't remember all the voices. We're not the ones making a big deal out of this. You are. We just got... We're just here to get what we agreed on, then we'll be on our... Then we'll be gone. If anything, I actually prefer if you left us alone, but you're the ones insist following me around wherever I go. Uh, a growl escaped the darker dragon's trembling lips as he bares teeth at Reza. All right, all right, that's quite enough. Let's just go. Let's just all go out inside already, shall we? After you. That sign, that sign for the restroom, is not a, a dragon. That is a lady. <laughs> that is clearly not how this world should work. That should be, I don't know, a dragon. I don't. They're not. They don't. It should be an ovipositor. It should be a picture of an ovipositor. <laughs> the crisis was quickly averted as we entered the building, which was characterized by as many floors, high ceilings, long, narrow hallways, as Sebastian led us to our destination. Uh, you have eyelashes. Are you a lady dragon? There you are. I was waiting for you. Velociraptor! But you also have horns, so... 
Wait a minute. I thought you were going to meet the guys from production. What are you doing here? They're only coming later today. So you'll have to, take, uh, you'll have to make do with me. I see. Well, Steamfleet, this is Anna. She kind of manages the building, though actually she's more involved with research wing than get it wing <laughs> rather than production engineering. Nice to meet you. My pleasure. I have something for you, by the way. It'll take them a while to make all the generators you promised, but I got one for you here. Feel free to send it home and, and give it a test. <laughs> That'll be great. I'll take it. Meow. Looks a little small if you ask me. Boy, have you heard that one. <coughs> uh, don't ask me any power, and do be careful not to drop it. Sure, I'll be waiting outside when you do. while you do your thing, Steam Clee. Meow. I suppose I'll wait for you outside as well. Meow. <laughs> what thing? <clears throat> oh, have you brought the PDA? Of course, here you go. All right, now give me this thing. Let's now to give this thing a test run. The PDA lit up as her hands swiftly moved around its interface and calculated motions. By the way, what would you consider letting me run some tests on you as well? It would only take a drop of your blood. What? Why? I work in biology, so obviously this kind of thing would be very interesting to us. I'd share the results with you, of course. Sure, why not? Great! It was good to use a small device in the drawer, which from a glance reminded me a lot of test tube. Now, if you give me your hand, please. I reached out to her. She shook, took my hand in, into hers before she pressed the device in the back of my hand. I winced as a pain jolted through my hand. Something sharp drove itself in, into my skin. Shortly afterward, a droplet of blood was sucked into the tube attached to the small needle. Thanks! You're welcome? Well, I got an achievement called Blood Donation. You gave Anna blood. Looks like your PDA is good, by the way, so we're just about done here. And since we're both in biology, it could be interesting if you want to come meet some of our other time. Here's my number. All right. Oh, she blushed. See you soon. She's our friend. Well, that was interesting. Did she ask for your blood, too? Yeah. Did, did you give it to her? Yeah. Oh, well, it's your choice. I got no idea what they might do with it, though. I'm getting hungry. How about some breakfast? I'm all for it. Can't stand early moments like this. Brown. That shouldn't be a problem. Is cafe enough from her? What do you say, Mavers? I wouldn't mind a grab bite myself. Mavers? That's a good name. That settles it then. These chairs are human chairs. I cannot discuss, I cannot emphasize that enough. Uh, nothing on the today's menu either. Lucky for us, the cafe was mostly empty when we arrived. And it was still pretty early in the day. Reza was quick leaving to a table for two, prompting the dragons to get one of their own on the other side of the restaurant. Ugh, finally. I can't stand that guy being my tail all the time. You don't have a tail. That's... They say it's for our own security. I'm very much aware of what they're saying. We approached an individual who appeared to be the waitress of the cafe. She was an interesting-looking dragon who, unlike the others I've seen before, was more like into a wyvern. A wyvern. Possessing two rather large wings as her forelimbs, which remember those of an oversized bat. And you have flying goggles. Oh, it's the humans! They have eyelashes. Oh, it's a tra- <laughs> You're able to correctly identify your, your species, our species based on what we look like. Congratulations. Where- wait, where? Oh, it's a dragon. <clears throat> That's a good one! Welcome to our- uh, Our staff. My name's Adine. Adine? I'll be your waitress today. What can I bring you to? Today's special. Yeah, me too. Just make it quick. Sure thing. Two specials coming right up. Meow. As I was saying, if you look at the big picture, don't you think there's just something off of this whole place? Where is it really? So is this supposed to be a completely different separate place from Earth or a different dimension or something that doesn't have? What do you think so? Uh, I'm not sure. I can't really say much more than you know who over there. He's probably listening to us right now. Yeah, he's a charming fellow. Doesn't seem so bad. When I left my gaze wander, I saw Maverick was looking in my direction. Our eyes met briefly, his expression not showing indiscernible emotion, while wondering whether I had just been a coincidence or really was able to hear us from the distance. I do have some theories, and if I'm right, we might be in trouble. What kind of trouble? What are you talking about? Shh, be quiet. I'll let you know more as soon as I can, but for now, let's just play along. After all, we already have one of, their, one of these babies. You pad the generator box for emphasis. God knows we need them. Oh, there she comes. The female, you, you know, her name is Adine. Adine returned, astonishing me with her ability to balance the dishes on her edge of her wings. She placed her forelimbs on the table and proceeded to move the dishes from her wing to us with a gentle push of her snout. I don't know about that. There you go. Watch out. It's hot. Now shoe scaly face. Thanks. Say nothing. Thanks. You're welcome. Why would you say thanks, scaly? No, shoe scaly face. 
Uh, apparently today's special, this is an odd-looking fish of some sort. I was a little hesitant to try, but considering the steam coming from it, and I do like steam clee coming from it, it'd probably have better wait. Probably better wait a few minutes anyway. When the waitress brought our meals to brought out meals to the two dragons from Cafe and exchanged a few words with them, Reza leaned forward and whispered something to me. I'll send you a letter with a coded message later. You'll know what to do. Reza rose from his seat before I made it known to me that he was still had a few things to do and left the restaurant. So followed shortly after the large of the two dragons. No. But you haven't even touched your fish? I was in a hurry, so I spent a few more minutes contemplating while I looked out the window. I was whole situation are bizarre enough, there was also now the vague sense of danger conveyed by Reza's early world, as I did not have an idea what kind of threat might be lurking out there. Eventually I took a bite of my somewhat unusual breakfast, while I already thought the smell was quite particularly the taste of it even worse. And I imagine it might be some kind of delicacy that had acquired taste, one that I certainly hadn't acquired yet. I saw I'd go outside before it was too late. Are you done? Sure I am. How'd you like it? I'll just say it probably is not for me. And you wouldn't be the only one to say that. You better wait outside just in case it decides to come up again. Bravery achievement. You tried the odd looking fish. Sure thing. I stepped outside, taking the scenery of this strangely familiar world. In the short time I was here, I'd already found the similarities between their world and ours utterly fascinating. After all, we were talking about an unmapped place with never before seen, never before seen form of life. As far as discoveries were concerned, even something as simple as new unicellular organisms, even bacteria, would have been remarkable. Yet here I was, standing in the middle of the village, eventually revealed by a race of intelligent talking dragons, with society not unlike our own. Reza didn't seem to share the same interest, and instead was more smitten with the generator. But given our reasons for coming here in the first place, I couldn't blame him for his enthusiasm being focused on something else. My thoughts were interrupted as something suddenly zipped past me just a little too close, causing me to settle back. It was a rather small dragon with a bay clamped in its small, who apparently had somewhere to be. Delivery, why don't you fly? Why don't... Why don't you fly? Um, I regained my footing and watched it disappear in the distance. Even though I'd seen enough dragons to recognize their variation in size, color, and other attributes, I guess this one must have been a juvenile of its species. Shortly afterwards, Sebastian drove me outside, having taken care of the tab. I gave her a generous tip on your behalf. I hope you don't mind. How nice of you. In any case, now that you've given us a PDA and Reza as a janitor, you're free for today. So if you want to go anywhere in particular, let me know. Or I could show you around town. I decided to be given a tour, but considering Reza's words, I wanted to be the careful and not stray too far without knowing more about the world first. I think I'll stay home for today. I still have a great, still get used to everything, you know? I'll just come with you back, then. <clears throat> there we are. Home sweet home, for now at least. Well, if you need anything, I'll be outside until my shift ends. Otherwise, I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you. See you tomorrow. See ya. Why don't you talk to him? I haven't looked at the apartment much, so I spent the rest of the day investigating and relaxing. I considered checking some of the phone numbers Remy left for me, but I thought I'd better keep a low profile right now. Found the kitchen fully stocked with plenty of groceries, though the variety was wasted on me. I had a particularly great cook in the first place, but what was more, I didn't even recognize some of the things I found in there. Whether they were edibles that we had back home that I just didn't know about, or something completely alien, I wasn't sure, but I didn't want to take the risk of eating anything I didn't know. After all, it was possible that some con of the constables might be fine for them to eat, but could still be poisonous to us. I was also glad to find a shelf which was filled with a room with a variety of books. While I found the subject matter of man, myth, or reality, they the same language? To be quite interesting, I had given up a few pages to do a exceptionally dry writing style, which I wasn't inclined to enjoy at the moment. In the end, I set up an adventure novel about a dragon archaeologist who stumbles upon the remains of a long-lost human civilization, after which she is hunted by an evil organization who wants to use the found natural artifacts for its own nefarious purposes. While entertaining, I admit that it reminded me too much of the trashy novels we had at home. I certainly found it amusing that certain tropes were not really unique to us as a species, though I wonder whether this kind of literature had fallen into disfavor here as they had back where I had come from. I was reading a particularly exciting scene in which the hero, Sheridan, used one of the magical artifacts shaped like a pair of human hands to hold a scepter with a globe at the top to prevent herself from being crushed on the ground into a bloody pulp by the ancient human temple in the wall. Then I suddenly heard the doorbell ring. Hello? Alright. Yes, yeah, slow pan. Show me everything. Don't- what? I let the person inside? Hello there, would you please sign? I'm not signing away my rights for this, am I? I got a letter from you that requires signature confirmation. I see. Look here on the clipper as the small dragon was holding with me, I saw the send a letter in the question was resin. There you go! I'm Lauren, by the way. Laura Bibson. Would you mind if I ask you a few questions? What is this about? I'm just making small talk. 
Wait a minute, I recognize you. You try the same thing with Reza. Maybe I should report you to his peers or improper behavior towards your clients. Aw, but it's important. Please, let me just talk to Steam Clee for a few minutes. You know how it is. If you want to interview with one of the humans, you'll have to get permission from the proper authorities. Oh, I'll be out here, Steam Clee. As an ambassador, you care about the accurate portrayal of humans and medias, don't you? Then you should talk to me, otherwise someone else will fill in the blanks and who knows what it'll come up with. Let me show you something. A small dragon opened his bag, rummaging through a number of letters and small packages. Hmm, I think I lost it. Anyway, I want to show you pictures of what people think human looks like. Or some of them. Like they have four heads and looking like nothing like you. It's crazy. What are you, Laura Mipson, a reporter? No, I'm just... Do you want me to room steam clean? Is what he's saying true? Yeah, I guess. I see. That sounds pretty interesting, though. Alright, you can leave your number here and maybe I'll call you later, but that's all I can promise. Thank you. Thank you so much. He quickly produced a small sheet of paper, he scribbled a number on it. Afterwards, he simply presented to both hands. Alright, you got what you wanted. Off you go. <clears throat> Zoom! Yee! Sorry about that. Don't worry about it. I guess that should be, that should be all. See you tomorrow, then. Right. Meow. Well, the commotion, I almost forgot that I was also still holding Reza's letter. Within the plain envelope, similarly plain sheet of paper with his handwriting. When I started reading, however, I saw his words were full soul of pleasantries that I knew he hated, but I assumed every word of it was faked on his, as to conceal his true intent. He mentioned that I know what to do, but I was unsure how I was supposed to decode the letter's secret message. I don't remember ever having a conversation with this type with him, yet he relied on me to remember whatever it was that I was missing, or he thought I would just be able to figure it out on my own. This is what it said. Hello, my dear friend. I hope this letter reaches you swiftly and in good condition. Unfortunately, uh, we're not able to catch up earlier, so I want to write you this letter. How have you been these last few years? What have you been doing? How's the family? I feel like there's so much we should talk about since we have not seen each other over much, see each other much recently. At least we have a chance to do so in this form. Quite an exciting venture that we're on right now. How would you like it? How do you like it here so far? How happy you liked it here so far? Made any dragon friends yet? Ha ha. Anyway, I'm looking forward to see your reply soon. H I Q H I Q H A. That's the code. Best regards, Reza. Various things came to mind. Only reading certain words or letters was the one that I thought of immediately, but I couldn't make anything out after trying to find a system with array of letters and lines. May have looked more carefully. Read between the lines. Lines, of course. Maybe there's something supposed to read between them. I didn't have an implement which would be able to read the fine print, though with the hand le handwritten letter, I doubt Reza could have done anything of this sort. Or maybe refer to the fact that we were both given an apartment, considering that things they provided for us. Maybe we just had to find the right object to code the message. There were everyday items here too, though of course I still had no idea what pictures they were looking for. The bookshelf was stocked with quite a variety of books on different topics. Look behind the books. Maybe Reza left a message here at some point. He could have known that I was going to live here as well as possible. Nope. Uh, after remembering every simple result, no indicator anything that would help him to smokers. But even with a hint, how could it enter the apartment and not just the bookshelf? Maybe it has something to do with the books. The shelf is full of them, but I suppose it can be inside one of them. The assault of human rights from outer space, born to serve, price and prayer, the X Men spearhead, and how to use it. Uh. Okay. 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 That can't be it. Born to serve. Rise in the ashes. All right. Price and Prayer. Alright. I'm not reading these books, I apologize, but it's a bit much. Those are cats. Feel my wrath, the bay leader, slow and painful death. Alright, draconic desire. 
I was so young and naive back then, barely ever reached the age in which the Doris process of fighting made settling down and starting down became expected, yet none of my peers interested in my... No, no, no. Like a wrecking ball, he came out of nothing, breaking all the barriers, entered my life. Two weeks ago, I was nothing. Today, I'm happily striking alive. Who knew out there that all the people alive? Aww. Alright, a bunch of books! Go back. Go back. Uh, look at the bathroom. Hey! Look in the shower. No shampoo would ever be found, of course, and no hint to hint either, just some body wash. No razors. Take some. I just... I just wanted to take some with me, not like consume some right now. Slab of meat. That's right, milk. Regular egg. It's salty. You drink the mystery liquid. Oh. Date. Fig. Oh, jeez. Pear. Grape. Lemon. Lemons. Lemon, of course. Why didn't we realize it sooner? Lemon juice is a simple way to hidden message using household items. We learned other chemistry. It's the most boring detail, of course. A message written with lemon juice on paper becomes just invisible to the naked eye when dried. But after heated gently, oxidation can make the message visible. So next to the in class, blah, blah, blah. Sorry. Made a joke about using the method to cheat on the next test. I replied by saying you had to bring in iron. He expected me to remember a random chemistry class happened years ago, but then I did remember it after all. Meet me at the portal tonight, 10 p.m. is all the message said. I wasted a good amount of time, but I still have some left before I had to go meet Reza, so I decided to make some lunch. <clears throat> Afterwards, I resume reading the book with countless adventures of Sheridan and Earthplace destroying cultural artifacts. Unsurprised, they came to a happy end, but the organization stopped in its tracks, at least for now. I thought the ending was deliberately left open for ambiguity, but I turned the page to all the advertisements the next entry in this apparently long running series of books. I realized all this has just been applied to set up the inevitable sequel. Luckily, this appointment didn't last as long as I, got it. I had to get going to meet Reza at the portal. When I go outside, it didn't seem quite as dark as I arrived yesterday. It might have been difficulty to find my way otherwise, but I could see the portal in the distance. As I was walking, I wonder why anybody followed me, but then the land seemed oddly deserted. Why is everybody asleep already? Eventually, I arrived at my destination. Rose was already standing idly by the portal, his fidgeting, making it obvious that he was waiting for me. I was already wondering whether you'd get it at all. Uh, I guess I did. What a wonderful night it is. Just look at the stars. You can see them so clearly here, with all the pollution lingering in the air back home. Almost like we were looking right in the face of the eternity itself. For so long, humanity thought we'd be finding aliens out there. But after a few years, we found we were still alone in the universe. Turns out we're just not looking in the right place. What's going on, Reza? Why'd you call me here at this time? For one, because you spent, you're, we're sending the generator home. Right. Before I was sent home, they told me they would limit these portals as they couldn't afford to keep it all the time. In order to keep contact with us and enable us to send things over, the portal would be open just for a quarter of an hour each day. Sending back, something back home wasn't really problematic for us since the high energy expenditure associated with sending bigger objects only affects the sender, not the receiver. However, this also meant that until all business concluded in regards to our trade with the PDAs and the generals, we were basically stuck here. As the other, do you know what this place is? You said something about trouble. How much danger are we really in? More than enough. I'm afraid this whole place will be gone soon, and we better not be here when it happens. Uh, what are you talking about? I hope you've seen it too, but it took me a while to understand, and I had a head start on you. In any case... Huh. While I was speaking, my gaze wandered and fixed on some movement nearby. It was hard to make out anything, but I imagine it might just be wind blowing through the nearby shrubbery, except for the fact that it wasn't. there was no wind. Reza. This might take a while to explain, we'll get the whole night. Reza, look. He turned around and faced whatever seeing, squinted before he called it out. How, you! How dare you follow me even here? The disturbance came closer until even clearer that it was Maverick, who had hidden nearby to listen to into our conversation. I knew you were up to no good. What are you talking about? Were you planning here or some kind of attack? Wait a minute. There's no reason for it. Don't try to deny. I heard you were talking about the cafe. I saw the letter. I, you could think I couldn't smell lemon on it? Pathetic. You have to come with me to the police station now, both of you. Come on, I think you're overreacting. But we'll come with you if it'll help. What the? Uh, Reza, what are you doing? 
Come on, Steam, please get out of here. Uh, in, the, in the dragon's side, I can see the rune where the bullet have turned aside. A trickle of blood staining his dark scales and the earth beneath. Reza used the opportunity to run off some direction I wasn't sure which. Uh, I frankly scanned my surroundings looking for Reza, though he already vanished in the darkness. What was I supposed to do? Run away as well? Help Maverick? I was just diplomat. I had no idea what's happening. Suddenly, the dragon looked around, hitting me in the guts with his tail. I was lifted off the ground really before I felt the impact of my body hitting the ground. Hard enough that my vision blurred almost instantly. I definitely roar battered my ears. What was his cry for help? I could barely move, but I found it better not to try, as not to startle the wounded dragon more than he already was. It certainly wouldn't end it bad for me if I tried anything. I heard him take a few unsured steps before he lay down on the ground, panting. I'm still watching you, you know, and you better not make a move. Not for your own good. If I have to get up again, come after you in this condition, I can promise you won't be nice. Took a few minutes listening to his labor beating before something arrived. It was two dragons. First working by Sebastian, the other I don't know. I heard Sebastian and Maverick exchange a few words when the stocky fellow approached me. Uh oh, it's the cops! It's the fuzz! Hey, kid, you alright? Uh, still feel a little dizzy. I'm Bryce, the chief of police of this town. Kill what happened? Uh. Reza shot Maverick and then ran off. Is that so? The face was stern and seemed lost in thought as I overheard Sebastian's conversation. Yeah, but you're the flyer on duty. You probably won't find him now. Not here in the darkness, anyway. Well, that's just brilliant. What do you think, Chief? Steam Clean, can you walk? Yeah, I think so. All right, Sebastian, take Steam Clean to the apartment. Get us some help here for Maverick, and we'll look for Reza. Right on. Come on, Steam Clean. I'll help you out. I was still sick, shaken up by the events I just witnessed when I arrived in my apartment. Not knowing what anything better to do, I soon fell in a deep slumber. Could I have taken like a whole bunch of painkillers? Uh, the next day I woke with many questions lingering in my head. I considered calling someone from the police department to ask about Reza and Maverick, but in the end I decided against doing so, as I was sure they would contact me with anything to tell me. I knew there was no worrying about it for now, so I settled on starting another book. It didn't take very long, though, before the doorbell rang. Did Bryce, the, did Bryce, the chief of police, take it upon himself to escort me today? Oh, it's you again. Are you surprised? No, I. but I guess it means bad news. Frank Cho, how are you holding up? Better than yesterday, that's for sure. Let's go for a walk then, shall we? Sure. This time I was taking a long different route than yesterday. I was quite sure there was more to this than just taking a walk. Oh, it's so hard to read. I'll just go ahead and guess you didn't find Reza. Yeah, we'd hope he'd come back on his own by now. Do you have any idea where it might be? Maybe you mentioned some sort of place in particular that holds some meaning to him? No, not really. We didn't get a chance to talk much yesterday after, before. There's that too. I have no idea why Reza would do anything like that. I had the impression that they weren't very fond of each other, but how is he, by the way? Oh, Maverick's doing fine. Well, there's plenty of blame to go around. You're right. They didn't particularly like each other. In a statement, Maverick says he expected Reza planning some sort of attack. Do you know anything about this? No. He only told me something was going to happen, not that he was planning anything. At least that was the impression that I got. He's suspecting you too, by the way, they both, that you both planned this all from the beginning. No, that would make sense. Actually, none of this doesn't make any sense. Why would we go through all the light lengths of our agreement only jeopardized by doing something like this? You already have our PDAs. So we don't have much to show for it yet. If we had any nefarious plans, this wouldn't be a good, wouldn't have been a very good idea. You have a good point. I believe you, but from our side, we only have Maverick's word on the whole matter. After all, he was the one who spent the most time with Reza since he arrived here. But even then, he didn't really have any reason to follow you yesterday, and his behavior was completely out of line. I'm just glad you came out fine. If he wasn't on mandatory sick leave, he'd be suspended right now. We'll have to wait until the whole thing's over before we decide what to do with him. I can assure you, this won't be taken lightly. Maybe they both acted in the heat of the moment. Maybe. We still got quite a lot on our hands now, though. Would we have a wounded dragon and a missing human? This could lead to a diplomatic crisis. Maybe Reza will still show up and get this all behind us. I sure hope so, too. I really want to jeopardize everything over this unfortunate incident. Yeah, how about we both keep quiet as about this whole thing for now? After all, I don't think any of us want our people panicking about this already, right? I merely nodded in agreement. Eventually, we arrived at the police station, where the chief took my formal statement in regards to yesterday's events. He asked me about Reza and Maverick too, and not that I knew much about anything that preceded yesterday's events or the mysterious catastrophe Reza had mentioned. Afterwards, he thanked me and let me file a statement while I sat at by his table, waiting and listening to the going-ons of the small provincial town police department. 
But I returned to be approached by someone who seemed a virgin news. After a lot of talking between the two, ensured that I couldn't make out. A lot of talking between the two, ensured that I couldn't make out from my position. This went on for a lot of talking between the two, ensued, ensued, that I couldn't make out from my position. This went on for a bit until Bryce returned to me. Friday, I have more bad news for you. Reza has officially become a murder suspect. M murder. Right into the crime scene. I hope you come with us. Me? A crime scene? I don't really know much about forensics. It's just that you're the only link to Reza we have. Considering what he said would happen to us, it's in our all interest that we find him as soon as possible. And if he has anything to do with it, you might be able to help us find him. Your cooperation would certainly be appreciated. It'd be a nice gesture to show us you're trustworthy in the eyes of those who might otherwise think after what, ha what happened yesterday. Uh, I will help. I suppose we don't really have much of a choice, but you're right. we got to find Reza, and that's what it takes. That'll do it. Very well. Let's go, then. On our way to the crime scene, you tried to remember what would come. I had studied biology, so I was moving with the side dead animals. I asked myself how similar this would be. I wondered if my reaction would be any different if it wasn't a dragon, but a human corpse that I'd be seeing. When we arrived, we met by Sebastian, who gave us an overview of the whole situation. This morning, the victim was found by the livery flyer before a restaurant. Blood loss from multiple wounds likely caused the death. Forensic is already here, so feel free to poke around. A few paces in front of us, an unfortunate victim lay on the ground, covered by a sheet to conceal the body, not the large red stain beneath. We approached while Sebastian went off to detour. Any curious onlookers. I know it won't be pretty, but I'm sorry I put you through this, but you know what's at stake here. Just remember what I told you and you should be fine. Alright. Are you ready? Just do it. Mara! It was Mara? This looks like claw attacks. Also, there's blood on their lips, so there must have been some defensive wounds. Or de uh, yeah. What do you think? Well, he's definitely dead. Yeah, rip. Let's just say this for your test. Tell me what you can do from what you give. Give it your best shot. The investigation start! Oh my god! Two wings, two legs, just the way it's captured. But big as a human lengthwise, not, if not slightly tough, the wingspan would certainly be impressive at that size. Alright, look at the cuts. The wounds are kind of hard to miss. True, what are we telling you? They were inflicted with a sharp little knife. They are clean cuts from a knife or another sharp little knife. That's true, but what, why does that matter? Um, it's not suicide. Dragons don't use knives. Actually, we do. Mostly by those with proper hands to use them, but still. That's right. Only those of us who walk on two legs with a proper dexterity wield a knife efficiently. Most dragons would probably just bite instead. Of course, this was on most of the bigger dragons and flyers. But then Reza still has his... What's the thing called again? You mean his gun? Yeah, if it was him, why would he kill someone with a knife rather than just using his gun on him? Um... He didn't want to make any noise. After all, he ran away from Maverick trying to hide from the police. Something as loud as a gunshot would have easily given away his position and alerted others to the areas. Right. That could be a good reason. By the way, which wound do you think is a lethal one? Well, the one on the neck. The one on his neck. That's right. If all the blood wasn't to give away, this, this stab wound is caught, characterized by a smaller... by a rather small footprint. You can tell it's the deepest one. Uh, and from the location, it's pretty obvious that it must have done some tremendous damage. What else do you see? Okay, well, there's a lot of blood. Uh... Dragon character died? No. Committed suicide? No. This isn't blood? No. He died here. Sure. He died here, else there wouldn't have been a trail to follow. The splatters also suggest this is where the, they fought. That's true. Unfortunately, it doesn't help us determine who the perpetrator is. OBJECTION! Excuse me? Sorry, I just wanted to say that. Go on, please. The lips! What about the blood on his muzzle? You tell me. He's a vampire, he fought back. He fought back. Might be the perpetrator's blood. Yeah, that's true. I expect for forensics already to take a sample of this, so it might actually help us determine who the perpetrator is. Hmm. I think that's about everything. How'd I do? Did I get an A? Nothing? You know what, kid? I'm impressed. Maybe we should have you around more often. You did well in the system. You did well in the first investigation. Hey, Chief, do you still need the witness here for anything? Imagine most of the dragons discovered about earlier, I recognize as a dean. 
Why she's in the cafe? She's too distraught, which was given the situation wasn't very surprising. I don't think so. Take her to the apartment and get her statement written up, and that should be it. Sure thing. Zoop. All right, miss, we're gonna take you to the apartment. Well, of course. When she spotted me, however, her composure brightened visibly. Oh, it's the human. Well, I'm a human. I'm a human. Well, I call you by your name, but I never actually told it to me. It's Steam Clee. What are you even? What are you even doing here? Do you work with police now? I guess so. That doesn't sound very convincing. It's not quite. Conv I'm not quite convinced either. By the way, I didn't know you also do deliveries. I do a little bit of everything. I re really. That's nice. I liked uh, fish yesterday. You don't have to hide it. That was quite a acquired taste. To be fair, I wouldn't recommend it to someone new like you, but you could always try something different. Here's a number. If you don't want to come, we'll deliver anything you have to, anything we have to you. Thanks. Oh, sorry. I guess we're going. Bye. Zero. Zero. What do we do now? I suppose head off too, unless. Oh no. What is it? Uh, Maverick. Maverick. We've got a violent homicide, and of course, no one from the department tells me. I have to find out from a neighbor who I wanted to ask me about it. Good thing rumors travel fast, eh? Of course I'm told. You're on sick leave. Mandatory sick leave, I might add. Uh, I'm not here any official capacity. You see, I'm merely enjoying a curat curative walk in the fresh air and happen to come across you by accident. What do you want? I don't want anything. I just want to find out that no one tells me about this, but the prime suspect buddy can mess with the investigation. I see how it is. I know what you're thinking, but don't jump to conclusions here. I don't need to jump to conclusions. I think the dead body you found says it all. You really have an attitude, Maverick. You know, if I weren't, if you weren't on sick leave, you'd be spending right now for attacking Steam Klee yesterday. Do you even have any idea what kind of repercussions this could have on us all? Me attack Steam Klee? As far as I can see, I'm the only one who's injured here. Besides, I'm so sorry for apparently being the only one who's doing his damn job. Right, let's just all sit by the bottom of the suspect and loose and plan his next move. You know what? Whatever it is Rez was talking about, he was going to tell me just before you showed up yesterday. I don't need to hear it hear you of all people belittle me about this. What's your problem? If anything, I want to find just as much as you do. Don't compare yourself to me. Your words mean nothing. Enough. You shouldn't even be here, so you better go now and get some rest before I take disciplinary actions. Fine. When we do find them, you'll see I was right. I have to prove it for myself. So be it. Meow. Can he even just do his own investigation like that? Well, as long as he doesn't interfere with us, he can, can't really stop him from doing things on his own free time. I see. I expect you won't be able to hear the standards before forming an unbiased investigation, though. He has already made up his mind. It's clear to me he won't be looking for facts, just evidence to support his own view in order to prove to us or himself who knows. He's always been like that. Always something to prove. We'll have to be careful. He'll be looking for Reza soon enough. To be fair, I might be too if I was shot. Let's hope Reza... Yeah. Yeah, and that's exactly why I wouldn't be on the case if he wasn't on sick leave. Don't worry, Reza will turn him eventually. I surely hope so. All things considered, I admit that reminds possible that Maverick was right, but could Reza, I know, really be a murderer? You know what? You think of something that might help with the investigation? If you need anything else, just call me. I will. Well, I think we're done here. Let's go. Bryce let me back to the apartment. I guess it wasn't much to do. In the meantime, I spared the more Doris parts of the investigation. Maybe I should have been glad about this, though. Now I have an afternoon to fill. Wow. Alright, so we got ourselves some, uh... Um... Time spending stuff here. Um, I think I'm gonna hang out with Anna, but uh, I'm gonna call it here. This has been uh, Angels with Scaly Wings. Uh, it seems like a pretty decent uh, visual novel. There hasn't been any glaring spelling or grammatical errors, which helps a lot. I mean, there was an Oxford comma, but that's a that's an if. Uh, as far as that goes, the the story is interesting enough. The characters seem friendly. Um, Visuals are on the middle of the limited side, just a few expressions, not a lot of animation, but that's, you know, par for course for a lot of visual novels. Uh, music's decent, and, um, you know, some intriguing stuff set up, so there you go. Angels of Scaly Wings. Check it out. Cheers.